Hello everyone, welcome back to Life of Clay for another sculpting video. Kenji here, your sculptor, and today, I will be making a remarkable spider, the Macracanta Arquata, or the Longhorned Orbiver Spider. And before we begin, please consider subscribing if you haven't subscribed yet, and don't forget to hit the bell icon to get notification and to receive updates on what I will be making in the future. Okay, so without further ado, come, bring the clay on, and let's get started. Let's begin with its opistosoma or the abdomen and I use this 1mm stainless steel wire as a holder for the filler. I just apply epoxy on the tip and cover it with tin foil. Bulk it up a little and form it into a triangular shape. And once set, I cover it with a thin sheet of clay and shape it out based on the reference. Macracanta is a genus of Asian orb weaver spiders recognized as containing the species Macracanta arcuata. It is notable for the extremely long curved spines on the abdomens of the female members of the genus. It occurs from India and China through Southeast Asia to Indonesia and the species appears to depend heavily on primary tropical forests. The female M. arquata build orb webs 3 or 4 feet wide in forested areas. These webs have hollow hubs and white silk beads on the radial threads and were more often observed on the underside of the leaves near their webs than hanging in the center of the web. M. arquata was historically included in the genus Gasteracanta. The authors, however, did not propose generic reassignment based on their data. And now I'm detailing its underside, including its anal, and I'm gonna add those wrinkle or folded skin texture around it. Someone asked me to give a little explanation about why I use plastic film over the sculpture when detailing. Well, by using a plastic film over a sculpture, especially those that requires rounded and smooth intricate details like with this spider, when you push any particular tool over the plastic covered surface of the clay downward, it creates tension on the plastic pulling down the surrounding surface and that creates a smooth rounded edge on the groove of the details. And that's it. I hope I have explained it well. Please let me know if you have any more questions about my methods and techniques and I'll be glad to explain them in some of our future episodes. Then let's move on to the dorsal side of the abdomen and add those circular indentations called sigilia, showing where the spider's internal muscle is attached. And then I just add poke holes on all the locations where spines and horns will be added. And to the oven, it goes. Next, let's make its abdominal horns using this 0.4mm stainless steel wire that I had slightly curved. Then I just apply dots of glue and wrap a yarn around it. Then I brush it with clear resin to keep the yarn in place. This method will give two to the wire for the clay to cling on while sculpting. And once cured, I wrap it with a very thin strip of clay and shape it out into a very slender horn. Sculpting a very slender part like this one is not easy. Without great patience, you can pull out the shape well. One more thing is that a very thin stainless steel wire like this one I'm using is quite resistant, causing it to vibrate while I sculpting. Horns are done, let us now bake them in the oven. We can now add the horns and I use cyanoacrylate glue in attaching them. I hope I pronounced that correctly. And for the rest of the small spines, I just use liquid polymer clay in attaching them. Then I also apply liquid polymer clay on this gap of the horns and abdomen and add small piece of clay to seal and to fill them up. I just blend it in and shape it out to a seamless finish. The females of this genus have tough shell-like abdomens armed with three pairs of spines. 
The spectacular median spines or median project upward and outward curving in toward each other along their length. The front and rear spines are short, relatively inconspicuous, and roughly equal in length. The male of this species measures only 1.5 mm with stout conical spines. Brushing it with alcohol to smooth out and then cure it with heat gun. Let us now make its legs and I use the same wire we use with the horns. I just cover it with a very thin strip of clay and shape it out as slender as possible. So far, these are the smallest legs I'm going to make for spiders, but as always, I love challenges in regard to sculpting because this helps me to discover and develop my personal techniques that may be helpful not only for me but also for you guys. I just shape these legs out based on the reference, adding their segment details and smooth them out. Yes, I'm sculpting the pedipalp here and it's even more challenging. Microscope, isn't it? And now let's cure them in the oven. Moving on, let us now sculpt its prosoma or its cephalothorax or simply the fused head and thorax of the spider. I first attach this small piece of clay on the tip of this wire and yes, it may look like a match stick. This will be the base and filler of the prosoma, which I then cure with heat gun. Then I apply liquid polymer clay on it and cover it with a very thin sheet of clay. Then start shaping it out based on the reference, adding all the details including the chelicerae, ventral parts, and its carapace. And these small pieces of clay I'm attaching here are the coxae, the first joints of their legs. and then adding the very small hump on the carapace where its eyes are grouped together. Then adding the trochanters, the second joint of their legs. Adding some fur texture on its carapace, and after this, let's cure it with heat gun. Moving on, and yes, I'm gonna make mold of its prosoma and the legs using liquid silicone, so I can make copies of it in resin and to achieve the translucency of their legs with color variations. And now the silicone molds are ready, and I'm now mixing my graffiti resin and alcohol inks as well. And in adding it, I just drop the resin mix on each lead's pouring hole until the resin flow reach the other holes or their vents. And same goes to this mold of the prosoma. And as you can see, I stick a stainless steel wire into it and this will be its temporary handle for later procedure. And after this, I just set them aside overnight to let them cure. And we can now unmold them and trim off their excess resin using a nipping tool. Going back to its abdomens and let us now paint them. First, I prime them with gray gesso. Then I apply white base paint on the abdomen and paint the horns with black. The upper surface of the female abdomen ranges from yellow to red, even white or black, and is marked with black sigilia. The ventral surface of the abdomen bears yellow or orange marks, and the median spines can show a bluish iridescence. And I'm gonna start with the orange one. I now add a layer of yellow and then followed by a layer of orange.
adding some red on the basis of the horns to create gradient. Then painting the patterns of the underside with burnt sienna and black. And also painting the sigilia with black. Next, I paint the rest of the spiders with red, white, and yellow color. And all the paints and materials I use are listed in the description box down below. And after that, I seal them with gloss water-based varnish. And among these four, which color do you like the most? Please let me know. And we can now cut off their wires and set them aside. And we can now assemble its prosoma, dipping the base part of each limb in cyanoacrylate glue just enough to make them adhere on it. I am trying to be precise and very careful in positioning the legs in this moment because this will be their permanent position until I attach them to their abdomens later on. And now I brush the joints with resin to reinforce the bond and also brushing the legs to make them shiny. Then I also add fine synthetic fur on their carapace to give them more realistic look. Once cured, I remove their handles and grind the back portion of their carapace to create a small crater on them. This crater will accommodate the protruding excess wire of the abdomens. Now the prosomas are ready, we can now proceed to the final assembling. And I use two parts epoxy in attaching the prosoma and opistosoma together. My decision in making color variations with these prosomas is to match the color of their abdomens and I'm so happy that they look good and they turned exactly the way I intended them to look like. And yes, everything goes according to what I have planned. And after this, I just set them all aside and let the epoxy to cure. And there they are! Our longhorned or weaver spiders are finally done. I hope you like them and if you have any thoughts about them, please leave your comments and I'll be happy to check them out. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and feel free to share it with your friends. Maybe they gonna like it too. I'll be making more spider sculptures and animals in the future so stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell icon so you won't miss out any of our future videos. 
You can also follow me in my other social media accounts and their links are in the description box down below. Thank you so much for watching and for your support guys. I really appreciate it. See you again next time. Have a wonderful day and evening everyone. Bye!